Yes, I was thinking to present in Fanna Elfin. I knew you, some of you heard her yesterday night, and uh, this is uh, her new book in Swedish, the first one. Uh, it came in March, but this is uh, what we call the official uh, release. And um, so, uh, Manna is uh, a Welsh poet writing in Welsh, and uh, her first book of poems came back in uh, 1976. Uh, she's translated into, I think, more than 20 languages. Uh, she's traveled all over the world for many years reading poetry, and um, she has also become known as an activist for the Welsh language. Uh, she is a professor of poetry, professor emeritus of poetry in the um, University of St. David in Wales. She's also active in uh, the Pen Club, and uh, she is writing um, libretti and plays for uh, TV, radio. She's written children's books and published uh, many volumes of poetry uh, in recent years with the uh, Blood Axe books. And um, last year she was awarded with the Shamondali Award. Last year. Yeah. And uh, she's also received many numerous awards. Um, and you have been to Sweden many times and to Denmark, to Norway. Um, uh, this project of ours started uh, two years ago in the summer. We started mailing and corresponding about um, uh, how to reach the sound of the Welsh uh, whenever possible. Um, and I am very grateful for the experience of uh, immersing myself in your poetry, and uh, which is so uh, deeply personal, but also uh, deeply Welsh in uh, I think in thought, in literary tradition, in sound, and uh, I, I believe one of the reasons of these uh, many translations which have occurred uh, of your poetry it could be, uh, apart from your skill, it's um, the strength of your heritage and uh, the way you reach out um, with it, um, out of a very long and poetic tradition. Um, so I have. Uh, I was thinking to ask you some questions, and uh, would like to <laughs> listen to you. But um, you're also free to ask many questions after this uh, talk. Uh, so you always uh, write your poetry in Welsh, not in English. Uh, it's been like that from the start, and uh, you have. Uh, You have written like this about Welsh, um, a private language, a language for the farmyard, uh, a little beer language, a language for children playing in the dust. Um, so, uh, so why do you write in Welsh and not in English? <laughs> yes, uh, well thank you f first of all to Marie for embarking on this marvellous um, hardback um, book of poetry and um, for your hard work and for um, many, many um, hours of, of toil, I'm sure, and, and changes along the way. So I'm, I'm really grateful because I believe that translator, translators um, or being in translation means that you have many friends and I all of my translators <coughs> are also friends and that's part of what binds us together I think is that <coughs> understanding that congeniality uh, between us um, what you just quoted was something that w used to be thrown at at Welsh as being something for the home something you know keep out of, of uh, place it's not a language to be part of everyday life and part of public um, acknowledgement. And of course, in the 60s, um, you, in America, you had your civil rights movement, and we had our language rights movement, which kind of mirrored what was happening in America in that it was non-violent, that it was direct action, which meant that hundreds of us went to prison for various spells. Um, and 
because of that, I believe, we were able to turn the tide of the Welsh language, if you, if you can put it that way, um, whereas it was kind of thought of as being dying when I went to school. I went to a totally English school where Welsh was only taught as a grammar, as a half hour every day. Um, so it, we needed to change that, and by now, the schools are overflowing, bilingual schools are growing, um, outgrowing their territory, and, and we have a television channel because, again, because people uh, did all kinds of things from, from climbing masts to putting uh, the TV off in, in some areas in, in London, and I think they had enough and decided, oh, let's give them a television channel. And so gradually the, the, the Welsh... Um, uh, uh, the, the the hope of, of Welsh surviving and, and moving from a, still a minority language, of course, and one's aware of that. Uh, but there is uh, there are signs of of increasing interest in the language. And what's happened is that even those who don't speak Welsh have a sense of pride uh, in the language, which is what we wanted to achieve. And even our uh, soccer team, though they haven't done very well recently, Wales. Um, but you know, there's a song David won, which he wrote uh, during the time when we were campaigning, and the the word is um, a heed We're still here, and it is a bit of a miracle that Wales has survived, uh, knowing of our English friends uh, across the border and the way they have wanted um, or tried to kill the language and kill the spirit. We have a Senate, we have a Senate. Um, people can speak in Welsh or English, uh, not always wisely in either language, but that's politics. Um, but so things, um, things are moving ahead. And poetry is one of those areas that is very strong in Wales because um, Poets have always been seen as being the prophets of the people because we didn't have um, uh, we didn't have a, a, a government of our own, and so poets were expected to say things about life in a way that perhaps they didn't in other countries with less of a um, with with more uh, a stronger uh, uh, politic. Um, in place. So, sorry, I've rambled on. Does that answer the question? But yeah, yes. but, but but Welsh uh, to me is is a language. It's my gut language. I'm an intellectual English speaker, and I've taught uh, uh, as head of English um, English department at a university. Um, but if I if I get emotional, my emotion is all Welsh if you can understand that. And I, of course, speak English um, perfectly well, I hope. <laughs> Sometimes, after nine o'clock, it gets a bit sketchy, you know, and I fall into Welsh then, perhaps. Yes, does that you. answer your question? I can't remember yes, the question now. But, um, yeah. How would you describe the Wales uh, present poetry scene? Are there still many poets uh, like you writing in Welsh? Or do they normally write in English? And uh... no, no. It's a, a well. The Welsh language. That one thing that has kept strong is the Welsh language, because there was a kind of institution called um, the Eisteddfod. Um, uh, sometimes I've been critical of, of that institution as well, because it was a kind of a West Supreme Court of, um, if you can imagine. Um, uh, perhaps that's a bit severe and extreme, but. Uh, the kind of poets, the Stadvod and, and judges, used to be very, very conservative. Things have changed. Uh, you know, I, even I've uh, joined the club and uh, you know have judged um, crown competition and a chair competition, and every year is awarded to uh, people who compete. Um, so um, yes, Welsh. The Welsh language is very strong, but also in the English language has always been um, writing poetry. In, yeah. And we always think of English poetry in Wales as being another Welsh language, 
if you know what I mean. It's, it's not English, English, it's Welsh English. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, please do. Yesterday you quoted Doris Thomas. Oh, hi, Tim. Would you consider the English writing Welsh poets like, like the two Thomases yeah. and others? Do you count them as Welsh poets? Oh, yes. Oh, of course you do. But uh, from the contents, from the voice of their poems, do they differ from, do they form a kind of sideline to a main Welsh tradition? Or would they? Would they express themselves in English the way a Welsh poet with the same temperament would express him or herself in Welsh? That's a very, very good question. I think it depends on the era where they were writing. When you think of Dylan Thomas, our, our greatest uh, export <laughs> and, and import, um, he, I th he knew what Welsh poets and Welsh language, and some insist that he could speak Welsh, that he had to if he was going to Llanabri every summer. Um, but but he, his poetry sometimes is very Welsh in the sense of, of we have metrics in, in Welsh, Cynghanedd, you know, an englyn that's in English. You can see the englyn, the N-G-L. NGL that they have to correspond and and he did that with singing in chains you know uh, like the sea um, that kind of thing so Dallan had a bit of a a problem with Welshness because he was brought up in in Swansea um, in, in, in town when Welsh was becoming a dying language at that time and the industrialization and the rest of it. Aris Thomas always regretted, he was a friend of mine, um, he always regretted that he wasn't given, given Welsh uh, by his parents, um, had even elocution lessons to speak proper English, uh, like another friend of mine, Gillian Clark. Um, he always regretted that, but there was no one more Welsh than Aris, and um, Aris Thomas really, um, in a way, um, could be very critical of the Welsh people in not standing up, in not insisting on keeping the language alive. So, RS, um, we have three Thomases though. Uh, we have another Edward Thomas, the nature poet, and he said somewhere that he was five eighths Welsh. Now, I don't know what happens to the other little uh, number, but that's an interesting take because he loved. Um, melodies. He used to, again, come to Carmarthenshire on his holidays and he would sing lots of, of um, Alawan Gwerin, you know, folk songs. So he had that background as well. So I, I consider them every bit as Welsh if they wanted to be Welsh. And I think that's the interesting thing about Welshness today is that if you want to be Welsh, you can be. There's, there's no a barrier um, and we have lots of people who have come to Wales, have, have learned Welsh and consider themselves Welsh, Welsh people, like Parker, thinking of Peter Lord, our greatest art historian. So Welshness has opened up possibilities um, that didn't exist before, whereby we, we thought we were oppressed and felt subservient and all the rest of it. I think there's a new kind of confident in Wales and um, ever growing so because you know the fight for Welsh independence that's not going away it's, it'll take a decade or two but when you look at what we have in London at the moment I think most Welsh people would love to take over control and they are clawing back on our Senate our Senate which is worrying after Brexit that they don't want to give us you know what what we're Anyway, sorry, this isn't supposed to be a political. Um, sorry, Marie, did I, you know, tell me to shut up, please. <laughs> uh, so you have told me that the Welsh are actually almost singing when they speak their daily language. It's a lot of song in it, and um, the Welsh poetry matrix is historically a matter of music. Um, and does that come naturally to you when you write? Uh, uh, like writing in England or different metrics, um, or do you think now I'm going to write uh, to make a Welsh sound? Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, well, well in Welsh, it's, impo it's impossible not to write and uh, not knowing Cynghaneth. Um, my first degree was I I in Welsh. And, but I always broke free from that because to me that was confining what I wanted to say because um, with Cynghaneth, the Welsh metrics, you have to learn um, rules and in the 60s, I wanted to break rules. I wanted to break free. So I was more influenced, I think, by European poets, um, um, American poets especially, the long line I loved. Um, and, and Welsh tends to be short lines, you know, seven syllables, and uh, um, although you can have longer lines. So uh, I, I was a bit of a rebel. Um, writing poetry but I came to poetry because I wanted things to change and I I was um, it was the time of the Vietnam War and I'd be marching in London you know the anti uh, anti Vietnam War demonstrations and so forth and then anti apartheid and these kind of causes made me write in a way that wasn't um, in tune perhaps with um, with writing King Hanneth, because most people who learn King Hanneth, one of my friends, Mareri Hopwoods, learned King Hanneth through um, a kind of mentor, a mentor, and uh, who will tell her, that's wrong, you've got to change that line. I didn't want anyone to tell me to change my lines. <laughs> um, so, yes, I, I suppose a bit of an anarchist all round. <laughs> And uh, could you tell us about your last uh, published book, which is called uh, Tostery? Uh, it's not here now, but it, it means uh, grace. Uh, and um, this book won uh, a prestigious prize. Oh, it's here, oh. yes. Go Bruffardon, yet, something like that. Uh, what did you write about in this book? It's only in Welsh, not in English yet. So. Yes, this is my first book in Welsh only for 10 years because uh, Blood Ducks have been publishing uh, my books in Welsh and English. Um, and there's always um, a kind of debate, or oh, the Welsh is always on the wrong side of the page. You know, you tend to turn, it should be on the right side, not on the left side and so forth. Um, but um, this, I, I was determined to bring out a book in Welsh only. And um, this started, it's called Tosteri, which means mercy. And I think mercy is one of the strongest emotions a poet um, owns or, or believes in. And um, I started by thinking I'd write a totally uh, lots of poems about um, various women in history and um, contemporary women. And I, I started to make a list uh, of and I got to 34, and then realised this is this is an academic endeavour. It's not poetry, so I scrapped that. But I've got a few princesses here, um, which one of them was um, she's on the cover, Catherine Glendour, the daughter of Owen Owen Glendour, um, who was the last um, uh, last rebel really, um, who was uh, never never found, but. Uh, um, his um, his army uh, disbanded. He was trying to fight for independence back in the year 1400, 1410. And his daughter and his wife and children were kept in the Tower of London. And I was asked to write two lines for a wonderful um, memorial kind of statue to her by the Tower of London. And how can you be commissioned to write two lines and then nothing else. So the two lines turned into 14 poems. Uh, um, I've only got three here because they're in another Blood Ducks book. But then I thought of his wife, so I hadn't written about her, so I wrote about her. And, and There are many, many poems here. Also about um, the effect of COVID and um, being confined and also nature so so it's a kind of uh, very mixed mixed um, uh, but it's all I think has mercy at its core and it, it, in 2020 I lost my sister 
um, and in uh, last year I lost my brother, so there are poems, tributes to them as well there, so, okay? Thank you. I, have been oh, I, I should say that um, 190 books are published in Wales every year, and from the 190, they, they choose, you know, uh, 12 books of different categories, so this was in the, yeah, is in the category of poetry. I have been given the impression that you are drawn to the seclusion of writing, uh, but still you uh, travel to festivals and book fairs, courses, uh, filming, interviews, there is a biography being written about you, uh, so you are being forced out of your writing room regularly, I think. Uh, do you find any time to write uh, in your daily life, or do you have a routine for that's a good question. I, I don't, um, I have retired from the university and um, I don't have a weekly, I don't have groups anymore, but I, I, I'm in the middle of writing a, a play, a stage play, and it's my first stage play for about 10 years and I'm really excited about it, but also terrified because um, not writing for 10 years and suddenly having a director and dramaturg and all these people and um, actors will come and uh, they, they haven't chosen the actors yet so uh, yes uh, I do like writing plays I used to write a play every year for radio um, and then that stopped but I need to go back to that but I, I, I say every year I want to travel less which is why I'm here isn't it because <laughs> I travel less um, but uh, yes I, I, I know I should be still I should be quiet, I should be, um, yeah. But I have a book in Arabic next, so I'm just wondering where I'm going to launch that. So, uh, would you like to read something in Welsh? Uh, oh. or? Okay. Did you want to read that poem? Or you yeah. said there was a poem on the radio. Yeah, or, or, or I'm happy to to read um, something, I suppose. Yeah. Do, it's okay. Shall I read it? Yeah, yeah. I'll read this in Welsh. There is an English translation. I think that when I write a poem, sometimes it's a kind of sound, something like humming. And I love the idea of humming because it's universal, um, it's also you're on equal basis with everybody, and the sound of humming, and, and a poem often comes to me through humming. And during a COVID, um, children in primary school weren't allowed to sing um, Happy Birthday, so they had to hum it. And I think that's just a, a beautiful image of children together humming. And um, so this is the Welsh. Um, I've got an English somewhere, if you, if you insist. But I think this is enough because there's a lot of hum in it. And again, hum. Some say that the H is perhaps the one of the first. Sounds that you know we there are about two hundred sounds we have and before language became the must before grunting and you know uh, must have been humming in the air. Agur hum thou wor thoi wevis din melis your hum sin hum yan vel emin sumeriai dir greatiket in white kinoid crest. Hadiu. Caiff plentyn glywed yr hym, ar ym, yn asion, emau o'r nodau. Hym na gair, na gair, ond cegau ar gai, yn llawen hai, heb yr un llef gref, dim ond si o gan, isel fel hwy angerth. Neu adar y si ar frigain sysial, blaen ffrwydd i neithdar. Hym, hym, hym iawn ddaw o anian plant bychain, yn gydradd o gytun ar alaw o ddaw o'i myrmyr hym, yn herio awelem heb al arnadu ar adain ugain ugain eleni. So there's a lot of hym there.
something you translate your poems yourself? Um, if I'm desperate, if, if there's a, a situation arising, but uh, no, I haven't been translating myself for such a long time because I have wonderful English language translators, um, and I'm not going to name them, about six. And um, they, they find something in the poem very often that I ha haven't seen or felt or... And my idea is, if I have to do it, why should I have to do something twice? You know, it's, the poems come in that language. Sometimes I'll write a found poem in English, something I've seen on the television, um, or, or something funny. Very often uh, humorous ones, but I wouldn't publish them. But, um, so this is the translation of Humming. Do you want to hear it? No? Oh, okay. Um, humming and a hum from meeting lips sweet as the hum that hums the Sumerians hum him to creation and marked by the measure of Christ today a child hears hum as the M melts a balm of notes and mouths muffle words or air the boom voices still as Siogan soothes and hummingbirds sing their first fruit from nectar. Hum, hum. Humming is an instinct for harmony. From a murmur, melody defies the crashing breeze. Hum, on a wing and a prayer. 2020, our year. Yes? Can yeah. Can you explain the um, Italian that you like are a well shot? Are you ready? Yeah. Ooh, so sure, Bobby, nah. Um I was asked, have I written words um, on the Welsh knot? Um, I don't think I have, actually. I've um, railed about it. <laughs> I've... My grandfather couldn't speak English. He was brought up in the 1970s, but he was in World War II, World War I. Yeah. And he remembers going to the classroom in Cladaro School. Yeah. 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 No, no. Well, there is the Welsh Knot. You all know about the Welsh Knot, don't you? Um, yeah. Sort of in, in the 1870s, um, some school um, inspectors went around Wales and decided the reason why Wales was an unruly country uh, and, and running wild was because they didn't speak English. And so they, they banned uh, the speaking of Welsh. It happened in other colonial situations. They banned the speaking of Welsh. And the person holding, they had to put a something around their neck, uh, kind of Welsh knots on a board, a WN, and then the person caught with that at the end of the day would be punished, would be caned. And so, of course, it, it created tensions in class, you know, who, who would rat on, on the next person. Um, and so that happened for, for a long time. Um, uh, and then... Um, Things well, I suppose the the war happened, uh, the First World War, and uh, uh, yes, uh, but 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 that idea of English as being the language of, you know, of uh, life, public life was strong. You know, keep your Welsh at home, uh, and it's good enough for the home, but not for the outside world, and um, that's why it's so important to. Um, to stress that that's his history in a way, and that that we've um, overcome that kind of um, denigration. And, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Yes, but, but often in Wales they would say they sent the soldiers into Ireland, but they sent English schoolmasters into Wales which meant that for a time um, 
Wales was regarded as being one of the most literate um, countries in, in Europe because of having the Bible in our own language and also the school system in, um, you know, that they spoke perfect English as well as, as Welsh, um, as you can see. Um, uh, you know, I could pass as a... Well, no, I couldn't pass. As a, but <laughs> I wouldn't want to pass as anything but being Welsh. But very often people will still make fun of the Welsh language uh, um, and especially the kind of uh, dialect or, or the... Yeah. Sorry, Marie. <laughs> or, or did you want to open it up to... Did you want to read anything in, 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 in Swedish? Yes. One that, that you had difficulty over, but you overcame? <laughs> or... Yeah. Yeah. Is the microphone working still? Has it gone off? Uh, yeah. Do you want to shout it out? Yeah. Kind of, that's what Dallan said once, isn't it? Shout, I shout it out. Yeah. Uh, that, by the way, became a song. Um, I didn't know. Um, I do write a, a lot uh, of libretti, and uh, that became a, a song, um, uh, which is better than the poem. <laughs> when you get music added on to it, yeah. Anybody else? Oh, the title. Yeah, yeah. Well, Blood Ducks brought out a book called Kerlangel in 1996. So you've used the same title, haven't you? Ah, yes. What well, was that? Because the no, it's nothing to do with the Norwegian. Um, book that was supposed to come out. No, no, okay. Uh, well, Cell Angel was um, a book in Welsh and English that came out in uh, 1996, my first book with Blood Dogs. And it's about a boy um, who was um, locked up in an, institu in, 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 in an institution. He was 15 years of age and he was, uh, as he told me, I'm only here because of my temper. But what his temper had done was was great damage, and but I, I left um, feeling sad for this lad, um, who said to me, "I was Welsh once. He'd been from foster home to foster home, never kept, never kept a, a family who who could deal with him." And when I arrived, he said to me, um, "Oh, you, what are you to be coming to see me? Are you a?" social worker uh, you know, and I said I'm a poet and he said oh I can play the piano so we were allowed to go into the hall um, where he started playing twinkle twinkle little star and then nothing more that was all he could play and the other boys the other lads in, in this institution were looking through the mirror and laughing because they knew that he had conned me to go to play on this grand piano, just that one line. Um, and I left there feeling, you know, the angels weren't so great in the Bible. You know, they were quarrelsome lot. And so I wanted to take him, put him in a cathedral where he could play, where he could hear music. I'm feeling quite emotional thinking about it now, and this is 30 years ago or 40 years ago. Um, I wanted to place him there, and that's what poetry can do. If I want to put a lad to, you know, and I wrote another poem about him, about a, being a fisherman. He liked fishing. He had a fishing rod, but he couldn't go anywhere to fish. But that's poetry, that you can do things that you can't do in other, other medium quickly. I mean, you could write a novel, I suppose, but... 
or a play, but um, it, it, so I went home and I wrote this long poem that was very, very dense, um, and I had to often explain, uh, and it ends with me wanting him to be an angel, to be singing in the cathedral and being, you know, quiet and um, in harmony with himself, because he was obviously a very troubled, troubled lad. Does that explain? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah, emotional thinking about him. Well, that's what poetry does, isn't it? It's, it's, it's that um, emotion that uh, you control and, and cool the emotion down by writing it down. And letting it for a while. And, yeah. Is that what you do when you're right? it will be in bookshops hopefully will it yeah yeah and on online oh, oh yes sorry those numbers mean nothing to me <laughs> yes oh good thank you Ooh, that's uh, Mel <laughs> no uh, that's uh, that's a uh, that's a very big question that's a very um, it's the culture. I suppose it's because it's a small country. You know, they've always we've always thought ourselves as being too small for anything. You know, this Wales is too small for this and that. But being small has its um, advantages. And I know that some Ukrainians, for example, who've come over, one came to stay with me. Um, she said, "You have all these networks in Wales," and she said. For the first time, she escaped from Butcher, of, of all places, with her two um, um, teenage uh, children. And she said, until the war happened, we didn't have networks. We didn't have this community. And suddenly, when the war started, people were phoning one another, trying to gather together, you know, phoning up and saying, my fridge is full, but I'm free. Help yourself to whatever you want. And it's that kind of community Based, I suppose also that Wales, because we haven't, we haven't got um, the big um, grand houses of of England and all that. You know, it's been an industrialised, uh, post-industrial now, but it still retains a bit of that community spirit. You know, choirs. Not that I like choirs very much, but but you know, male voice choirs are a plenty. Aren't they in, in, in Wales, you know? And I know of friends who will say, oh, somebody's lonely, well, tell them to join a choir, you know? Um, it's easy, you know? You get community spirits going and singing. And I suppose the arts, you know, have a, a, have a role in that. But I don't know if Wales is better than anywhere else, really. It's just that... Can Wales... I hope so, because otherwise, um, looking at the alternative <laughs> is, is not very encouraging, you know. Um, thinking of um, the way the, um, at the moment the, the government is kind of another imploding and um, quarrelling. Um, whereas Wales has always voted for a kind of socialist um, um, government that has... You know, free schools, meals, uh, you know, that's, you know, free medicine, all, all the things.